Hi, welcome back to Box Delights. Today, I'm showing you something completely different. This is Blinks. Blinks calls itself a smart tabletop gaming system. You play games with it, like a board game, but they're electronic. Each of these little hexes is its own little game. And you can't see here, I'll turn the lights down in a minute, but Inside each is a set of LEDs. They communicate with each other via LEDs and they join together with magnets. The base set and each expansion contains six blinks. These are called blinks. And I was kind of struggling with how to define these things because are they an electronic board game or is this a tactile video game? It's not really either. It's a medium all of its own. When you play these things, you're playing them like a board game but also like a video game. They won't replace either. They really are a medium of their own. And as you network these things together, you buy more expansions. This is what they call a sushi roll. And in each one of these, a neat little way of keeping them together, um, again, magnetized. And each one of these will come pre-built with its own game, its own little sticker on the back. In fact, I mean, I've ordered mine from the Move 38 website. You can do that yourself. You can get the base set and expansion set number one but on kickstarter right now is a community set and the guys at move 38 who produced it have sent me a little preview of the six new games that you can get in this community set but if you want to go buy them now you don't have to kickstart you can buy from the website like i did at a reduced rate so this is the base set of games and this is the first expansion these are the two that i bought but what's unique about these, and I'll demo this in a minute, with each blink, not only does it come with its own game, but they've kind of split, there's, a, there's an operating system and memory in here, right? Um, they've kind of split it in half, so half of it is dedicated to the game that comes pre-built, but the other half is dedicated to learning new games, because each blink on its own doesn't play the game. It needs a network of other blinks. And the more blinks you have, the bigger game you can play. Some games will be limited and only need, say, six blinks. And some will benefit from even more. So the base game plus an expansion and however many blinks you wish to network together. And when you network these things together, one blink can teach all the other blinks how to play its game once they're networked together. I'll demo this too. But the USPs of this really, what makes it not a board game? What makes it not a video game? So it's not a video game because it's a tactile thing. You can play with these components. I mean, they call them games and a lot of them are games, but there's also just, just ways to use these things, ways to explore these things. So what sets them apart? Well, you can pick them up. You can throw them across the table. You can place them side by side. You can move them around. You can click them with your fingers. You can split them apart and reconnect them. Each blink is aware of and can talk to its neighbors. So it really is a tactile video game experience, if you like. And why is it not a board game? It's closer to board game than video game because the types of things you do with it are board game-esque. So you could, for example, I mean, look at, I mean, these are hexes, right? Nothing could shout board game more than hexes right we're, f we're familiar with meeples but 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 hexes too to me conjures up board games you're familiar with these kind of shapes right so there's a game called puzzle 101 that uses this shape for example but you can play games on these like dexterity games or two-player abstract strategy games or games that you've never experienced before they're new kind of experiences because what blinks gives you within its inherent architecture are things like games that use timers. So real-time games, there's a timer built within each one of these blinks. Games that make use of the fact that these things are changing colors. You can't see it here, but I will turn the lights down and, and show you. These things are changing colors and will change colors when you interact with them. Games that have hidden information because there's a little computer program inside of these. You can make use of the fact that information can be hidden and revealed later. 
games that make use of the fact that they've got a magnet in them and you can slide them around and if they get close they magnetize together and probably most importantly of all is that they have a very simple programming language you might be familiar if you've played around with arduinos or the elegu components that you can you can build electrical circuits and then program them with arduino this is the same technology they have an api a, a programming interface that simplifies that programming to allow you to interact with these things and create your own games if you buy the dev kit that comes alongside that you don't have to you don't have to do that you could just go and head and play the games that come with each set but the excitement of this system for me is to be able to take that simple programming language plug it into one of these blinks you can buy blank ones or you can replace and overwrite the code that's sitting on each one of these all the code is on online, so you can actually just you know restore it later if you wish. This is for Astro. So if I overwrote this, I could download it again. But this simple programming language, I'll show you a little screenshot, is just bursting with potential. And for somebody like me who likes designing, and I'm a software person anyway, the Blink system is a challenge to invent new ways of using these things. We'll come back to the technical side a little bit later. Let me just show you what this system is capable of doing and why I really like it and the types of games that they're delivering. Let's turn the lights down. Now, one of the first things that people say when they see this system is, what about colorblind people? <laughs> because yes, this system relies heavily on colored LEDs. Well, the Move 38 founder and CEO, Jonathan Bobro, designer of the, the Blink system, has been really keen to cater for colorblind folk. Although designers are free to use any of the 32 odd thousand colors that each one of these things can produce, the core games have been developed with a colorblind safe palette. So he's picked out colors like turquoise, the burnt orange, lilac, and colors he calls hot pink, pea green, and periwinkle. So they really have thought about that. And it is a challenge because there's lots of different kinds of colorblindness. But like I say, the the colour palette is open to developers and designers and end users to change to suit their needs. The other thing is, this isn't just about colours. I mean, you can see some of these things are blinking. So there's lots of different ways that these things can provide feedback. And one of our favourite games, me and my daughter have been playing, is called Flick Flop, which uses three colours, pink, blue and yellow, which I'll demo now. And we'll see um, if you're colour blind, maybe leave a comment. How difficult is it for you to make out the true colour, obviously, of what you're seeing on the video is going to be limited somewhat by what my camera is capable of. But let's show you how um, Flick Flop works. And then, as an example, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about the technology and, and how this thing works. So house lights back on. What we're going to do is find Flick Flop. There it is. We'll flip these back over. So each one of these little blinks at the moment is playing its own game and it doesn't have a network of other blinks to play with. It's sitting next to a load of blinks, each playing their own game. So what we're going to do is take a flick flop, and we're going to do what's called a long press. There's different clicks on here. You've got a single click, a double click, and then a long press. If I long press this, it will go into a spinning blue cycle. Here we go. And now it's looking for neighbours. And you'll see a little train of thought going around this network as it's teaching all the other blinks how to play flick flop. Once it's finished, you'll see a trail of green as each one is completed. And now it's ready to play. Each one of these blinks is now playing flick flop. Flick flop is a dexterity game, kind of like shove ain't me. You can play with any number of blinks. The rule book recommends 12. So if you've got the base game in an expansion, that's six in each, that's 12 blinks. So I've got 18 here because I've got three sets. So let's just play with 12. So we'll lose six. We'll grab a couple and then we'll give each player five each. You could play this two player, you could play it three player. You could even play it single player if you wished. And for this blinks version of shuffleboard we kind of need like the jack in bowls the thing you're aiming at okay so we're going to take a long press these two spare ones and they'll start cycling through yellow blue and pink if i put them together they'll synchronize there we go 
pink, yellow, and blue. That becomes our targets. Place it however far you, away you want, how difficult you want it to be. And then each of us is going to choose a colour. Let's say I choose to be the blue player. So let's say this is blue player here. They need to, when these light blue, they're going to fire this down, and flick it down and connect in. There we go. And the neat thing here is what you can see as the floppers are changing colours, the one that scored for blue has a little spin on it and a little blue segment. So you can keep a visual track of who's scoring what. Let's say then a player on the right takes yellow. Oh, <laughs> it didn't connect. So blue's now got a chance to score twice. We can knock this one in. Go. Oh, not quite. Right, can yellow steal it back? Not quite. Scored one. You get to know the sequence then. Oh, yes, scored two. One, two, three for blue, one for yellow. Yellow's got a bit of catching up to do. Let's see. One more. And then let's just get these in there. One more for yellow. And what the designer's done here is as you separate the floppers, the ones that are not spinning, and pull these apart, they change color to show for which team they scored. So yellow ended up winning four to three. And that's flick flop. One of the games I like from the new set is also a kind of a little um, on the dexterous side as well. It's called Group Therapy. Let's try this one. So once more, we'll teach all the Blinks how to play Group Therapy. Spinning blue. This time, the objective is to separate these ones that have now turned red. Let's go again. So the idea is that these guys are happy when they're separate. Oh, I'm too slow. <laughs> happy. Let's start again. The these guys are happy when they're separate. It's too hard. It might be hard. <laughs> it's quite hard with this large number. Let's try again. Yes, nice and easy. These guys are happy when they're separate. So some are happy when they're together, some are happy when they're separate. Too slow. <laughs> Try it with smaller numbers. Might be a little bit ambitious here. I mean, this is the thing with blinks. You don't have to play with the numbers that they ask. Oh, didn't get them together. They ask for. Ready? That's better. Easy. And then maybe you can make it harder by adding more as you go along. Keep adding more if you wish. Blinks just know their neighbours, so they'll just, um, <laughs> nice and easy, they'll just keep playing the game. Keep adding more. Go. Oh. oh my. Ah, too slow. <laughs> too slow. Then there's games like Raid, which is a bit more strategic and has you, there's Raid, has you taking on the role of a Viking horde. And this time you'll create a landscape. Again, you can create it as big or small as you wish. Switch those on. Um, <laughs> these ones are still playing flip flop. So teach this to play Raid. And it's a bit more strategic. And I think the code a little bit more complex too. So different games have different levels of complexity. Raid starts with this green landscape of countryside tiles. So you can shape your world however you wish, make it as big or as small as you wish.
one of the interesting programmatic challenges that the developers faced with RAID was counting how many blinks were connected so that all blinks were kind of world aware because you're going to be fighting over territories with this game and to know when the game is ended and then count which players have the most territory and is there for the winner becomes a challenge. And with your island created, each player then removes a blink and this becomes your long ship. You double click it to launch it. There we go. And you can see mine has red on this face and purple on either side. If I double click it again, I can change it. Now it's violet. Now it's yellow. Now it's blue. Okay, so I can choose which color I want to be. So let's say I choose blue. Take another from, say, over here. Double click, launch a red long ship. And then we're ready to launch. And this is where the game asks players to close their eyes. So in secret, let's say blue chooses to launch. Let's go around here. It flashes for a moment. Now we've landed our longship here. The other player can now open their eyes and it's gone back to how it was. See, Blinks is giving you some kind of mechanism that's easily implemented. Now red will secretly launch and it blue closes their eyes and they may decide to go, say, here. They could go in the same place, but let's say they go here. Okay, then remove. Now once both players have landed their longships, now we'll double tap any blink on the island and everyone will see where on the shoreline of our island that our ships landed. There we go, blue here and red here. And what happens then is our troops, our Viking hordes are expanding across the island. Now when you're ready, you can go again. So let's say, right, red, close your eyes. Let's say blue decides to land here. Okay. Blue closes his, his eyes, red opens theirs. Let's say we go here. Okay. Now notice when I was taking that away, red accidentally tapped in again. If you try to land illegally, the game is validating. It said, no, you've already landed. You can't go again. All right. Not until we double click. So everybody open their eyes, double click. And what you're going to see is not just the new landing, but the existing forces expand. You see how red here is expanding, blue is expanding. So this becomes an area control game, a nice two-player abstract area control game. Another one I want to show you is Zenflow. I can't run through everything in one go, but Zenflow, this is also a favourite. And not a game this time, it's more... Well, I'll show you, I'll show you more of um, an exercise in just seeing how blinks behave. So I'm just gonna load that and teach everything how to play. There we go. Now Zenflow is really, I mean, build what you like. All it does is it sends, if I click, waves of color across your array of blinks. Double click and it sends a random array. And really this is just to zen out to. So for example, what happens if I create holes in the middle and I don't know, start doing things like, like this. Yeah, or another neat idea that didn't quite work. It needs to be, let's try smaller. Let's try smaller. <laughs> I told you it's creating puzzles for yourself. Come on, Ricky, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Now we've got a circle of colors.
Zen flow. And this kind of flowing, um, <laughs> it's beautiful. This kind of flowing idea um, is something that was used in, which one is it? One of the new ones, I think. Yeah, Dark Ball, it's that one, I think. Okay, I'm ready to go. And this time, we're playing this evil, kind of evil ping pong game. And the idea, oh, let's take this loop out for the moment. The idea is that you're playing this way, back and forth, clicking, 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 it's a bit too slow. Oh, it's good timing. And every time you score a point against your opponent, it's filling their block. And if you get good timing, so I scored this one, it's got another red spot, only one more point against this one and he's lost. If you get good timing, it goes fast. If you off time it, it goes slow. So this is more arcade style. And of course, if you wanted to, you could play more than two players. You could put three players in and have another one here. And it <laughs> see how this came back to myself. So more little arcade games. This is great fun. One of my daughter's favorites is kind of this game that's a little bit like whack-a-mole. It's called Wham. Actually, I've got a little clip of her playing. As the moles pop up, you've got to hit them as quick as you can. Yeah, take a look. Just before I demo the next thing I want to show you, which is, I think, probably widgets. This one here. Widgets might be of interest to board gamers. This is a way of rolling dice, flipping coins, and actually having a spinner, so something extra to have on your table. And for once, something where a single blink does something on its own. But before I do, I wanted to just talk about the technology a little bit. So there's six sides, six faces that communicate with each other. Inside each blink there are 12 LEDs. You could say there's uh, more than that, you could say 24 because there's six RGB LEDs. Okay, each one of these little dots, so one on each face is an LED and then each side has an infrared LED that it communicates by. So each one has a send signal, receive signal, and it can receive numbers from 0 to 63. So that's how programmers are able to develop communication between the blinks. There's a little bit of memory on each one as well to store variables and so on. So it can have different states and different commands to say which color is it showing and so forth. Each of these RGB LEDs, these six here, they're five bit, which means there's 32 shades of red, green, and blue. So that sums to 32,768 different colors that you can display. In fact, no single of these 18 LEDs is on at the same time, but because of persistence of vision, the way humans see things, they're flickering so fast and moving so fast that it looks like they're on all the time as a single, single light. And you might have noticed when we were playing the different games that, uh, you know, although each one of these six LEDs could be effectively showing a different colour, they kind of bleed a little bit. Um, so colours from adjacent sections will, will merge and create a colour in the middle. Though they have put, if you take one of these apart, there's like a little fin inside between each LED to kind of give you that little bit of distinction between each section. So they really have engineered these things with a lot of thought. And they're about uh, 40 plus hours of battery life. There's a little battery inside here. I know some folks have put rechargeables in theirs. 
So how about this dice widget then? Let me show you how this works. There we go, we've got a bank of dice now. Let's just grab one. So for a single D6, I roll it. And we've rolled one, two, three, four. Roll it again. We've rolled a three. Okay, so a nice little die. And if you wanted to roll 3d6, just click one and they all roll. We've got five, five, six. And it's really clear to see the numbers. We've got six, five, four. Six, six, two. The other thing you can do is, and there's a spinner on here. So if we long click, it now turns to a spinner. I don't know if you can make that out, but it's spinning round and round. Let's long click, send them all to spinners. And then finally, we have a coin toss. I'll turn them all to coin tosses. There you go. So you can say silver is heads and Gold is tails, that kind of thing. And if you wanted to toss 18 coins with a single click without making a huge mess. That's <laughs> pretty neat. And the other thing is they've said there's, uh, I mean, all those 18 different blinks, the widget one, they've created three little custom games that you can play, like a dice game, a spinner game, and a coin toss game. It's like this little game where you bet how many heads, how many tails. It's pretty neat. There's some great little strategy games in here. Games like Bomb, Fracture, Berry. One of the new ones is called Pirates and Lasers. That's also pretty neat. Maybe I can demo that one for you. There's Honey, which is like a little solo experience where you're trying to, it's not really a game, Per se, it's it's try. It, you've each blink becomes like a flower, a worker, a brood, or a queen, and you've got to try and build. Depending on the number of blinks in your hive, you've kind of got to build the most efficient um, hive that feeds the queen as much pollen as quickly as possible. Another of new ones is called uh, Paintbrush. This is also a little two-player abstract where you can. Uh, build and paint you get a, a paintbrush and you have to try and again it's an like an area control game you're trying to paint as you kind of like what we saw with that that raid game but this time you're painting why don't i should show you pirates and lasers because i think that's one that you guys might like you can rearrange this however you wish it's totally up to you Use as many or as few pieces as you wish. Again, it's entirely up to you. Maybe you'll play two ships, okay, two spaceships. And the idea is that on this ship, you have two lasers. Let's take these two. Okay, so we've turned these into lasers. If you can make this out. Each turn, you're going to fire both your lasers. And what you can see is your lasers are firing in three different directions. Each time you fire them, the direction rotates. Then each of your ships has a life. As these lasers fire, so this one fires this way, it does one damage to each ship in its path. So it did one damage here, one damage here, one damage here. This one fired this way and this way, so just this way. So it did one damage here and one damage here. So this, so far, this piece here has taken two damage. You might see it a little clearer if I darken things down. The next thing is you get to rearrange your ship. Each piece must be touching at least another two pieces. So let's say I grab this. Uh, this is going to fire this way. Let's grab this piece here. And then on each one of these pieces, there's a lilac side, this little side here. And if I place this here and press it, so I've rearranged my ship, I can actually then heal the blink that it's pointing towards, right? So I'm pointing this this way. Okay, so I push, and it's healed one damage from here and put one damage in here. So you're distributing the damage. Fire the lasers, 
So that one's going to fire this way. And then this one's going to fire this way. <laughs> so we've got two damage here, one damage here. Now this one's going to fire this way, this way. And it's really just a puzzle. And if you're playing against another person, it's going to be a challenge just who can keep their ship standing the longest. I mean, you can even do stuff like, let's say, I don't really want that one heading this way. Let's grab two pieces off. So is that actually, that's probably even worse. But I place this one here and then I can heal. I've got two damage on here. Yeah. Here. This one take, took one damage this way. Right, now you fire lasers. Fire lasers. Bang. <laughs> and off it goes, damage reapplies. And just sit and play with this puzzle. And like I say, you can take the same number of turns against a friend. And you know, if you've got bigger ships, you can just enjoy watching these things. Play out and puzzle. So that's pirates and lasers. Another neat little strategy game. There's games that test your reactions, up to six players. Games that see you trying to outpace a racing car. Games that have you filling your cargo bay from a resource-rich asteroid field. And games that are still waiting to be designed by you. That's Blinks from Move38. Thanks for watching. See you next time.